Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Have you any idea of the meaning of paramnesia? Neither did I until I heard the strange story, later confirmed by an arrest, of Mr. Terence Pierce. The word paramnesia means the illusion of remembering scenes and events experienced for the first time. You find yourself somewhere, or you meet someone, and you know you've been there before, or that you've once met that person. It's an odd experience. For Terence Pierce, it once was fatal. Our mystery drama, Insight into Murder, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Gordon Gould and Terry Keene. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Abnormal psychology is the study of mental processes that deviate from the imagined norm. The key to understanding it is the concept of the unconscious, which we owe essentially to Freud. One aspect of this complex subject is fantasy life. Investigation into such phenomena as déjà vu, the sense of familiarity in a new situation. And that, it seems, is what has suddenly possessed Terence Pierce. Call it paramnesia or déjà vu. He's seen something he's seen before. Let me see the newspaper, Terry. Yeah, it's on the lower right-hand side. Sybil Harrison strangled. Maintenance man arrested and charged with murder. Body discovered by husband Rodney Harrison and his close friend Seward Black, a film producer. Oh, how awful. What's the name of the man accused of the strangling? Uh, Philip Donato. Uh, he didn't do it. Terry, I don't understand you. Uh, I don't understand myself, Meg. You said Sybil Harrison and some English lady. What did you say? Lady Sybil Millbrook and Sybil Harrison are the same woman. <laughs> now, don't look at me that way. I know it sounds bizarre. Terry, that makes no sense. No, I suppose it doesn't. Let me see that picture again. What would you know about some Lady Millbrook? Didn't you say she was murdered in 1810? And how do you know that? Who was Lady Millbrook, anyway, and how could you have seen a picture of her? It was a portrait. Where did you see it? In Lord Millbrook's home. In 1810? Oh, Terry. Listen, I'm glad we're leaving on vacation at the end of the week. The Arizona air will clear your mind. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, you've been working terribly hard defending my brother. And what a marvelous job you've done. Thank you, darling. Ben will be grateful for the rest of his life. He was innocent, man. Yes, but to be accused of taking dirty money from a mob leader still makes me furious. Well, the department stood behind him. They knew he was an outstanding detective. And still, it could have broken him. As a police officer, but not as a man. Your brother Ben is a real man. Well, it's behind us now, thank goodness. Terry... You're still bothered by that picture in the newspaper, aren't you? Hmm? Oh, not really. No, forget it. It's, it's just a coincidence. That's not what you really think, though, is it? Come on, now. I'm your wife. I won't send for the man in the white coat. <laughs> I hope not. Just take me out of town. I look forward to our trip. You know, I miss the parishes, George and Kim. Oh, no. For heaven's sake, now what? They... They lived in England near Enfield School. One of the boys from the school was Charles Cowden Clark. And he he had a young friend named John Keats. I met them at the parishes. Keats. Keats the poet. You remember John Keats? Yeah. Terry, you've got me scared half to death. You know that. <laughs> Well, it scares me, too. Look, should I, should I telephone Dr. Fisher? No, no, no. I'm, I'm all right. I wonder. No, really, darling. What is the matter with me? That picture in the paper... And Lady Millbrook and Sybil Harrison being lookalikes? Even the names are vaguely familiar. I seem to be experiencing something I experienced before. That's déjà vu. 
Yeah. Your imagination is playing tricks. Well, could be, but it's all so vivid. I've never had an experience like it before. Did I exist in this fantasy land of yours? Yes. Yes, you did. That's that that's that's vague now. Like something seen through a mist. Mist. Mist from the Thames. Oh no. Darling. The parish has warned me. For my sake they feared Lord Millbrook. And then I was swallowed up in the mist. I wandered into it. And I was drowned in the River Thames. <laughs> you, Terry, for saving my life and my career. <laughs> you thanked me in court, then. Yeah, and I'll go on thank you as long as I live. <laughs> I hope you like this joint. I do. I like its old-fashioned flavor. The dark paneling and the red and white checked tablecloths. Hmm. Now, the food's plain, but uh, very good. Oh, I got that table over there, the one for two. Ben. Hmm? Isn't that... Isn't that a man named Stuart Black? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, it looks like him. The uh, friend of Rod Harris. Whose wife was strangled a few nights ago? Yeah, the actress. Hey, what a dirty shame, huh? She really was a beautiful woman. And a pretty good performer. Well, I wouldn't know. She could light up the screen, though. I've seen him before. Sure, why not? His picture's been in the paper before. He's a producer. Nasty case. No, that's not right. It's no case at all. Donato was found in the bedroom with a picture wire in his hands and lipstick on his face smeared all over. Drunk as the Lord. He'll go up the river for life. <laughs> Should. Donato didn't commit that murder, then. Huh? Oh, of course he did. Harrison and this guy, Seward Black, walked in and found the wife strangled and Donato sprawled on the floor with the evidence in his hands. It's an open and shut case. What are you talking about, Terry? Excuse me for just a minute. Oh, well, I'll meet you back at our table. Mr. Black? Yes? You are Seward Black. Is there something I can do for you, uh, Mr.... Terrence Pierce. I'm an attorney. Don't you remember me? I've never seen you before in my life. Now, if you don't mind... Not in this life, no, Mr. Black. <laughs> Uh, you had one too many, Miss Pierce. I don't want to be rude. You don't remember 1810? And the murder of Lady Rodney Millbrook? Or the Lord's close friend, Sir Seward Humphrey? <laughs> You're uh, drunk or insane, Miss Pierce. Or a little bit of both. Uh, please leave me alone. 1810, that's 165 years ago. Well, what was that all about, Terry? I wish I knew. Hmm? Well, uh, why did you want to speak to Seward Black? <laughs> I prefer not to risk it. You lock me up. <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you worked up my curiosity. Well, Seward Black, the man who murdered Sybil Harrison. Are you serious? Dead serious. To explain it? No, you'll think I'm crazy. Well, I, what I think isn't important. Well, now, we've locked up Phil Donato for the murder of Mrs. Harrison. Now, you're saying that Black committed the murder, huh? What's your evidence for making such a charge? I haven't got any. <sighs> well, you're talking like you really are balmy, Terry. Tell you what, Ben. You are coming over for dinner. Sure. Meg's fixing corned beef and cabbage to celebrate my being cleared, and <laughs> you know how a Kelly likes corned beef and cabbage. Right. Well, let me hold my story until then. <sighs> okay. Does uh, Meg know anything about this? Yeah, I told her over breakfast. It was the picture in the morning paper that started it. Started it? Started what? A journey into the unconscious. Ah, holy Saint Simon. And I traveled all the way back to the year 1810. And what's that year got to do with how you're acting now, going up to a stranger and getting his back up, huh? Now, I could tell you were annoying him. He was annoyed. Now, don't tell me you accused him of murdering Sybil Harrison, huh? No. But he knew I knew. I could see it in his eyes. Oh, Terry, Terry, my friend, forget it. Talk to Meg and me all you want to about the murdered woman and whatever it was you bumped into on your journey backwards in time. But you're a lawyer. Cases are decided on evidence. 
Now, if you made an accusation against Seward Black, Mr. Harrison's best friend, what do you think would happen? I know, Ben, I know. Yeah, sure, you'd be laughed out of court. Nevertheless, I have just spoken with the man who murdered Sybil Harrison. Hi. Don't you look lovely, Meg. What's that color? Primrose. You like it? That's a beautiful blouse. And you become it. Well, thank you. My goodness, after 20 years, how nice. Many men take their wives for granted. Not this man. I hear we're having corned beef and cabbage for dinner. How did you... Oh, of course, you were having lunch with Ben. Oh, he ought to be along soon. So, come on, sit down and tell me about your day. Oh, there isn't much to tell. My partners were very happy. I proved that Ben was not guilty. I got dizzy from their pats on the head. Well, you deserved them, and I expect you got a really big one from my brother. Hmm? Better than that. I got lunch at Chris's chop house. Yeah. It was a rewarding day. No daydreaming? I'm sorry about this morning. I must have sounded a little wild. Well, that was an odd story you told me. I had a funny experience at lunch. Ben and I were having a drink at the bar when I saw him. You saw... Seward Black. That wasn't his name 165 years ago. Oh, no. It was Sir Seward something. And? He committed a murder for which a vagrant was arrested and hanged. Terry. I know. Laura, did you mention this to Ben? I told him I'd tell him the story tonight. Seward Black. He's that producer friend of Rodney Harrison. That's right. I spoke to him. Not a... Not about... No, no. I, I just asked him if he remembered me. He denied it, of course. He intimated that I was drunk or crazy or a little bit of each. I'd deny it, too. Meg, I've got to resolve this, this puzzle. Will you help me? Of course, Terry. Then, then try to get to the library tomorrow and look at back issues of London newspapers or periodicals for 1810. Find out if there was a Lord Millbrook and a Lady Sybil. Did he have a friend named Seward? Was a man, a vagrant, convicted for the woman's murder? Will you do that for me? Certainly, darling. Really research it, Meg. As Ben pointed out, cases at law are decided by evidence. I don't have any. All I've got is a picture in my mind of a murder and of an innocent man being hanged for the crime. It's a very long time ago. But the same crime has been repeated. I just know that. If there's any substance to what I've seen in my mind's eye... I'm going to defend the man now being accused of murder. A long journey back into time. Paramnesia, or deja vu. Give it either name, or call it nonsense. But I've experienced it, and so I imagine have you. You find yourself in a place you've never been before, and it's familiar to you. Or you meet someone you know you've known before. Is it nonsense? Daydreaming? It wasn't for Terrence Pierce, as we'll find out when I return shortly with Act Two. Can anyone have an insight into murder? Terrence Pierce sees a photograph in a newspaper and declares that a murdered woman, an actress named Sybil Harrison, is the same woman who, as Lady Sybil Millbrook, was murdered in England in the year 1810. Offhand, that seems to be absurd. But so are many of our dreams. Can you deny it? I can't. Hey, hi, Meg. Come in, Dan. Well, corned beef and cabbage last night and cocktails tonight. <laughs> what a sister you are. You're always welcome. How was your day? Well, I'm back in the routine. It's been a bad time, Ben. Yeah, yeah. I never expected to be accused of taking payoffs from that gang and, and then have to prove my innocence. Well, you did. Well, Terry did. Ah, uh, he's something else as a lawyer. Is he home from work? Any minute now. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, 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 thanks. I'll, I'll wait. You're really worried about Terry, aren't you? Well, not worried, concerned. Mm. It's all been very funny. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so, too, when we had lunch. You know, he left me at the bar and he walked over to a stranger. Yes, he told me, Seward Black. Hmm? Terry has convinced himself that Seward Black murdered 
Sybil Harrison. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's just not so. Now, we got the guy who committed the murder, Philip Donato. But that way you know all that. It's been all over the papers. Now, what's gotten into Terry, huh? What was all that last night after dinner about some murder that took place in England in, uh, 1810? Well, that's what I wanted to see you about, Ben. Huh? Terry asked me to do some research on the subject. He wanted to convince himself that he wasn't just a little crazy. So I went to the public library and looked over old copies of newspapers from that period. Well, they had newspapers? Well, of a sort, yes, and periodicals. And uh, is Terry just a little crazy? No. You mean there was a murder back then when, when, when he said there was? Oh, there's Terry now. Why would he ring the doorbell? Before you ask me why I rang the doorbell, I rang it to get into my castle. I left my keys on the dresser this morning. What? Tidy Terry. Hi, Ben. Oh, hi. He forgot his keys. Well, he's had a lot on his mind, Meg. And my guess is that <laughs> you are not going to relieve the situation. Did you turn up anything, Meg? I was just about to tell Ben. All right, researcher. That's here. Now, you're certain you haven't been cheating, reading up on some old murder case? I know you still read Walter Scott. Scott never recorded what jumped off that newspaper page and into my head. What I saw in my mind's eye, I saw. I still see it, in fact. And you found something? Yes, I did. It's rather terrifying, Terry. There really was a Lord Millbrook? There was. And a Lady Sybil Millbrook. Was she an actress? Oh, she had been. Rodney Millbrook was what was then called a womanizer. Before he ascended to his title of Lord, he seems to have been a very gay blade around London. He ran with a wild crowd, they drank, fought, generally were a nuisance to the police. He brought himself out of scrapes many times. Well, it was going on even then, huh? It's always been going on then. Well, Millbrook's buddy was a baronet. Hey, what's a baronet, Meg? Uh, a commoner, a person of common birth who's somehow distinguished himself. Oh. The crown then might bestow a sir on him. Seward Humphrey became Sir Seward because of some service, I'm not clear on this, which he performed for the king. A spy mission, I think. Sir Seward. And in 1800, uh, 1808, Lord Rodney Millbrook married Sybil Harrison, who was then appearing in Johanna Bailey's plays on the passions, whatever that was. Not good, I gather, but Sybil lit up the stage. Millbrook was wild about her, and he married her. And then she was murdered? It was in... November, 1810, that Lord and Lady Millbrook were paying a visit to friends near Winchester. Millbrook and his host had gone riding. A maid discovered Lady Millbrook's body in her bedroom, strangled to death. Good Lord. Just like Sybil Harrison. Sir Seward, who had gone with the Millbrooks on the visit, scoured the countryside and found a tramp. His name was Pip Donat. Philip Donato. Pip's a nickname for Philip. And Donat is another version of Donato. Uh, it's, I, I, I don't know what it is. And you know all this? Almost all of it. Go on, Meg. Terry, I don't like the rest of it. Let's hear it. There was a solicitor. Me? I could be. Anyway, there was a solicitor, a lawyer in London. He was suspicious of Lady Millbrook's death, so he began to investigate. He learned that Millbrook had grown very tired of his wife, Sybil, and wanted in every way to get rid of her. The solicitor... What was his name, darling? Edgerton. Rob Edgerton. Edgerton? Why, isn't that your middle name, Terry? Yeah. What, well, what happened, May? Did Edgerton learn the truth? No. The vagrant was drunk when the confession was wrung out of him. He was hanged. Which is just what might happen to Philip Donato. Pip Donat was hanged, but Rob Edgerton cast so much suspicion on Sir Seward that he was forced to leave England for the United States. Well, good for lawyer Edgerton. Uh, not too good for him. One night his body was found floating in the Thames. I see. So, may I suggest, darling, now that you've taken your trip backward in time, please come home. I can't do that. Sir Seward framed a vagrant for the murder of Lady Millbrook. And Pip Donut was hanged. Today, Seward Black, Rodney Harrison's furtive confidant and hanger-on, frames a maintenance man, Philip Donato, for the murder of the actress, Sybil Harrison. It's Phil Donato I'm worried about. Ben, hmm? you've got him cold to rights, haven't you? I'm afraid so. Well, let me ask you this. Huh? Who's defending Philip Donato? A uh, friend of the court. 
Donato's a poor man. I'd like to talk with him, Ben. Maybe I'll offer him my service. Oh, no, you won't. Do you want to end up dead in the East River? No, Terry. Then you do think there's something to what you've told us. Well, I, I, I can arrange for you to see Donato, Terry, but... See, I'm with Meg. Don't get mixed up in this. You both think there is something to what jumped into my head when I saw Sybil Harrison's picture, am I right? Yeah. Ben, make it possible for me to visit Philip Donato. Well, Meg? All right. But let me give you a piece of advice, my darling husband. Stay away from the East River. Good morning, Mr. Donato. Uh -huh. Hello. I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes. Oh, okay. I uh, haven't got any money. Uh... This won't cost you anything. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Mrs. Harrison. Oh, what's there to talk about? Who killed her? <laughs> I killed her. You see the newspapers. Did you kill her? They say so. Maybe I did. I don't remember much about it. I... It's it's all in the papers. Were you drunk at the time? Nah. No, I, I don't drink. Oh, I have a beer when I'm watching a ball game, but I don't touch the hard stuff. Then how does it happen that when the police found you with the picture wire in your hands, you were drunk? <sighs> yeah, I was drunk, all right. But you don't drink? Mm. Do you remember drinking on the morning of the murder? No. no. Tell me what you did that morning. Uh, from when? Well, from the time you reported for work. What for? Because I don't think you murdered her. Well, are you some kind of nut? No. I really have no doubts about who killed Mrs. Harrison. I know who killed her. Yeah? Who? Tell me the story. You, you think maybe I didn't kill her? Yes. Now, you reported for work. Yeah, I, I relieved the night man at uh, six in the morning. Someone's on duty all the time. You know, people want service all kinds of times. Well, why did you go to the Harrison's room? Oh, it was about 11 o'clock in the morning. The maids had already cleaned the rooms. Uh, one of them, uh, Gertrude, she said the kitchen sink was stopped up and I should fix it. Was anyone in the rooms when you went up, Mr. Donato? Uh, uh, just Mr. Harrison. He was leaving to go out. What about Mrs. Harrison? Mm -hmm. As far as I know, she wasn't there. I, I didn't look around. You know, you got a job like mine, you stick to business. They gotta trust you. So, Mr. Harrison was going out. And as far as you know, Mrs. Harrison wasn't there either. No, I didn't see her. Mm -hmm. The uh, newspaper said <clears throat> she had a date at, at the beauty parlor for 11. But she didn't show up. Now... What did Mr. Harrison say to you when you rang the bell and he let you in? He said good morning very nice and said he was sorry to trouble me. I said that's all right. Uh, I had it fixed up real quick. Anything else? Uh, yeah, he said there was coffee in the kitchen if I wanted a cup. Uh-huh. Did you have a cup after you fixed the sink? Yeah. Then what? Uh, after that, I don't remember. It all went blank-like. It's so simple, it's ridiculous. Huh? You were drugged, Mr. Donato. What? The drug in the coffee knocked you out. Someone had strangled Mrs. Harrison. She was probably dead in the bedroom and framed the murder on you. I was? Someone drugged me? Yes. It happened before. A long time ago. You, you mean I was drugged with booze? No. Yeah, but I smell all over from booze when I found it. Of course. The murderer poured whiskey down your throat and over your clothes. Who was it? I know, but I can't prove it. Mr. Harrison admitted that he told you to have a cup of coffee, didn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, at the door when he was leaving. That's when he told me. And no one else was in the room? Like I told you, I didn't look around. Hey, you really don't think I killed her? That's right. But how to prove it? That's the question. Terry, have you seen the evening paper? Have I ever? Well, who talked? I did. You? They make you have to be some kind of nut. Look here. I know, darling. Prominent I... attorney's theory about Harrison killing, and then it goes on about the journey you took backward into time, and Harrison and Seward are going to sue for libel. Why did you do it? Because I'm right. Some alert reporter wondered about my visit to Donato. So I told him my theory. But why? I want Harrison and Black to realize I know that Donato didn't murder Sybil Harrison. But why? I still want to know why. This will reopen the case. I've spoken to Ben, though he's not optimistic. 
But he didn't laugh at Donato's story. What's he got to work on? The only evidence the drugged coffee is long since gone. We'll see, darling. We'll check on Seward Black's movements on the morning of the murder. And I want to talk to the maid who serves the Harrison. Oh, Terry. Th- there goes our trip to Arizona. No, it doesn't. That's still on. But... Ben and the police can handle what has to be done. And I'll be perfectly safe. Well, I hope so. I'm worried silly, Terry. Don't be. There's no Thames or East River in carefree Arizona. Are you enjoying your visit? I hope so. Even science cannot scoff at dreams. And from a dream experience, as Thomas Jefferson remarked in a letter to Thomas Monroe in 1823... We sometimes pick up some hint worth improving by reflection. But can a man's life be saved by an experience in paramnesia? We'll find out when I return after these messages. Insight into Murder A strange and rather chilling story. A lurid murder in England in 1810. Its duplicate in 1975. Even the names of the victims and the perpetrators are quite similar. And Terence Pierce, otherwise an attractive, successful lawyer, is possessed with the conviction that the man arrested for the murder is an innocent man. All set for the airport, Terry? Yep. Packed and ready to go. How you feeling, huh? Well, a little nervous, to be honest. <laughs> the newspapers have had a lot of fun with you. <laughs> I know it. Uh, the papers think you uh, ought to be at the funny farm. But how about Professor Gruber? He didn't think it's all nonsense. Yeah, yeah, I read the interview with him. Well, that's everything. Kitchen, heat, draperies pulled, everything. Hi. Oh, it's nice of you to drive us to Kennedy, Ben. Glad to do it. Uh, Terry's feeling a little nervous. Yes, I am too. Those newspaper stories. Well, they're not what I'm nervous about. It's Stuart Black. Ah, he and Harrison had gone back to Hollywood. Didn't you know that? No, I didn't. For the funeral, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it was yesterday. Harrison said he'd go away for a while. Yeah, he's badly broken up by his wife's death. Well, with them on the coast, I've got nothing to be afraid of. No. We'll make sure of that. Now, just what does that mean, Ben? Nothing, nothing, Meg, nothing. We're we're doing some further investigating. Now, Terry's created a doubt about Phil Donato's guilt. Harrison and Black are angry about it, so I wouldn't want anything to happen to Terry, you know. What? What could happen? I didn't mean to alarm you. Nothing. Relax. How can I relax when you're suggesting that Harrison and Black might try to do something to Terry? <laughs> Not a chance. Why should they? Because they know they're guilty of the murder. Well, that's your theory, Terry, but it hasn't got a leg to stand on. But you said you're doing some further investigating. We are. Now, look, now let's not talk about it, huh? Okay? You're staying with the parish, is that right? Yes, in mm. Carefree, Arizona. Kim and George Parish, you remember that? Sure, sure. Same address, phone number? Yes. Why? Well, just in case anything develops. You know, I'll telephone Terry. I'd appreciate it. And now can we put this fantasy out of our minds and leave? I'm on vacation. There they are. Kim! Meg! Welcome to the <laughs> Hello, George. Hi. Oh, Good flight. George, you were just perfect. And yeah. the land and all this sunshine is just marvelous. I'll get the bag and meet you in front. Oh, <laughs> George. No, no, no. I can manage. I'll see you in a few minutes. Oh, it's so good to see you, Meg. I worry that you might not come. Why? Oh, well, yes, that worried me, too. A remarkable story. <laughs> it's been in the local papers. It, uh, it won't embarrass you, will it? Good heavens, no. Terry might be right. Oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that, George. Everybody thinks we're crazy. <laughs> you, uh, include yourself, I see. Well, of course. I must say that at first I thought Terry was suffering from something, nervous exhaustion or whatever, but I did the research, and it's amazing that Terry remembers what happened all those years ago as if he had been there. 1810. I mean, it boggles my mind to think the murder of Lady Milbrook could have any connection with the murder of Sybil Harrison. It's been driving us both batty. That's why it was so good to get away. And now, sunshine and your wonderful Arizona. Ah, I'll get the car, Kim. We'll be right along. I've read, Meg, that your brother Ben has persuaded the police to reinvestigate the charge against Philip Donato. Well, he's doing it for Terry. The trouble is, there's no solid evidence to be found against Seward Black. The historic Sir Seward Humphrey. Hey, 
You have read about it, haven't you? Of course. I wouldn't care to see history repeat itself. This is wonderful, darling. Clean, dry air. And look at the view over the desert and up to the mountains. Mm. Tomorrow I'm going to swim and lie by the pool and burn myself to a crisp. Pool? Sure. Look out the other window, the one facing the back patio. You see? Doesn't that look inviting? Tomorrow I'm going to wear it out. Yes. Very nice. You say that kind of funny. I didn't mean to. Water. Terry, you don't think... Oh, no. That couldn't be. Anyway, it was the Thames, not a pool at a friend's house in the Arizona desert. What is the matter with us? Oh, my fault. That got us both worked up about that miserable murder case over a hundred years ago. I'm sorry. Ready to go downstairs? It's getting late. The sun is almost set. Uh, not quite. You go ahead. I'll be down as soon as I uh, comb out my hair. I won't be long. You look beautiful. Run along. I'll be down in a few minutes. We meet again, Mr. Edgerton. What? Mr. Edgerton? Oh, good Lord. You're Sir... Sir Seward Humphrey. Well, then it's true. I was right. It's a long time ago, and I've never forgiven you for your persecution. But you were guilty of sin. So I was. And you called Tip Donato to be hung for a murder he didn't commit. What... what are you doing here? Harrison wanted to get away from Hollywood after his wife's tragic death. Just as Lord Millbrook left London after the death of his wife, Sybil. I remember. He and his faithful hanger-on, Sir Seward Humphrey, went abroad. <laughs> History repeats itself, Edgerton. I knew that when I spoke to you in Chris's bar. You handled that very well, Sir Seward. But your eyes gave you away. Oh. I knew that as Seward Black, you had killed Sybil Harrison and placed the blame on the maintenance man, Philip Donato. All those years ago, he was Pip Donat, a vagrant. He was hanged for your crime. He was a worthless tramp. Donato is an ignorant cipher. Now, the innkeeper... Oh, my good Lord. I think the wife's name was Mrs. Kimberly. That's it? She reported that some gentleman had brought the vagrant glass after glass of brandy. You'd gotten Pip drunk... And then you framed him for the murder of Lady Millbrook. You made it very unpleasant for me in London. And that's why I emigrated to the United States. Not before you'd committed another murder. It was quite painless. Your body was found in the Thames. So it was. And now, history is repeating itself. You murdered Sybil Harrison, doped the coffee that Phil Donato drank, and framed him. Yes, it was quite simple. Why did you do it? The Harrison was tired of her two-timing him. Do you think you're going to get away with the murder? Of course. I made certain that a maid went up to the Harrison's rooms and cleaned up soon after I'd deposited Mr. Donato next to Sybil's outsized bed. Who called for the maid? Well, that's unimportant. And where were you supposed to be the morning of the murder? More details. Harrison and I can give each other alibis. No one has a chance of placing a charge of murder against me. We'll see about that. You freely confess that you did murder Sybil Harrison? Well, certainly. It was a pleasure. Why? Because you couldn't have her? I wouldn't have touched that. No good. Just about the same thing you said about Lady Millbrook when everyone in London wondered if you were a frustrated lover. That's a lie. I don't think so. What you think is unimportant. And we haven't completed our little drama. Harrison and I are going abroad. I'm producing a film in the south of France. But before I go, before my second emigration, shall I say, there's one more thing that I have to do. I suppose there is. It was the Thames back in 1810. And in 1976, it's a pool of Harrison's friends, the parishes. Intimate friends, I might say. Kim is Harrison's cousin... She invited us to spend a few days here until the publicity dies down. And just how do you propose to have me drown, Mr. Black? Oh, it'll be quite simple. 
I don't intend to try to overpower you physically. I rather doubt I could. You intend to mesmerize me? <laughs> Would you settle for tranquilize? What? What's that in your hand? Hold on, Terry! My arm! You dirty... I'll take that, Mr. Black. That's a move I'll break your head. Ben, what the devil? I'll be back in a minute, Terry. The police are outside. Let me turn this bum over to them. Let's go, Black. We've been after you for 165 years. Are you all right, Meg, dear? You're still white as snow. Drink your bandy. Well, I'm still trembling, and I still don't know what went on. Well, you were redoing your golden locks, and I stole downstairs and outside to the pool. Seward Black was waiting for Terry. But how come he was here? I don't understand. Well, ben arranged it with Kim. Kim's a cousin of Rod Harrison. She invited them to stay here for a few days. Ben, you used Terry as bait? Well, there was no real danger, Meg. I had Seward covered all the time. What I wanted was to hear what they would have to say to each other. But that's horrible. Not as it turned out. Kim Terry could have been killed. It was a weird experience. It's a nightmare. No, it isn't, Meg. Ben telephoned me a few days ago. He knew that you and Terry were coming to visit us for a week or ten days, and he told me what had been going on in New York. It sounded pretty wild, but George thought there was something to it. Terry's whatever you call it. Deja vu, yeah. To him, it was very vivid. I was intrigued. I did some research, too. Well, it struck us that Terry really had a vivid deja vu experience. He knew the murdered woman, Lady Millbrook. And the names fascinated us. Many are so similar, especially the first names. Well, except for Terry's 19th century name, Rob Edgerton. Edgerton's my middle name, Kim. Well, then it all fits. Right down to me is Kimberly, the innkeeper's wife. Isn't it amazing? But why would he want to murder Terry? I know that nonsense about history repeating itself, but without Black's confession, he'd have gone free. Oh, I don't think so, Meg. Remember the maid who received a call late in the morning to clean up the Harrison kitchen? Could she identify Black's voice? Eh, probably. Even more important than that, she thought that the coffee pot had a very peculiar smell, as if it had been burned. Now, she carried it back to her closet was going to give it a good scouring or tell Mrs. Harrison to buy another one. Well, with all the excitement, she forgot all about it. But we didn't, based on your suspicions and what Donato told you. The contents in the bottom of the pot were analyzed. Heroin. Well, I'll be. So that's how Donato was doped. Yeah, yeah, the rest was easy. Thanks to you, Terry, we caught the real murderer of Sybil Harrison. And my journey back into time really was an insight into murder. It began when a man saw a picture on the front page of a newspaper which jogged his memory and sent him spinning in his imagination back to a time long forgotten. Paramnesia? Deja vu? Whatever we call it, it was a phenomenon. More remarkable still, what Mr. Pierce saw in his subconscious was a pattern of murder about to be repeated. And it almost was. I'll return shortly with further observations. A dream is the occurrence during sleep of ideas, emotions, and sensations. Upon awakening, we may or may not recall them. Often the dreamer will tell in detail about what happened in the mysterious world of the subconscious. When you are lying in bed on a dark, quiet night, and you slip into sleep and then into a dream, perhaps you'll go back in time to an event that occurred long ago. If so, I hope it will be a less frightening experience than that of Mr. Terence Pierce. Our cast included Gordon Gould, Terry Keene, Court Benson, Earl Hammond, and Joan Arliss. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams...